on Jump Gears. Senator Bill Cassidy joins us. Senator Cassidy, how you doing? Moon Griffon, I am fantastic. I refer to you so often on our conversation regarding Obamacare. Uh, <laughs> did three times this past several days. Uh, whenever, whenever anybody thinks it's hunky dory, I'm saying, wait, let me tell you about a guy in Lafayette, Louisiana. Well, it's, uh, anyway. I, I, I've been able to manage it, but I had to, I had to do some, some swaying and switching and all kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is some people couldn't even do what I was able to do. And, uh, oh, totally, and, man. And, 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 and so I know, and I've, I've uh, met with an insurance guy about two weeks ago and a guy that's looking at doing some advertising to help people save some money. And he was showing me them premiums at 3,800 and 3,900 and 4,200 for small business people like me. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the thing about it is, uh, Bill, uh, Senator Cassidy is that I know there's been a few things done, but, but it hadn't been totally thrown out. And that's my frustration with it. That whole thing needed to be blocked out and start all over. And of course, there's never enough votes when you need them. And now there's definitely not enough votes because we don't have the house anymore. Hey, man, I got the scars from trying to do it. I still think we can come up with better ways, but, uh, as to your point, uh, Pelosi control in the House means that we've got to take a different approach. On the other hand, I remain committed. Obamacare gives power to bureaucrats. I want to give power to the individual, to the patient. Uh, you know, as a doc, I just learned if the patient has the power, the system lines up to serve the patient. Well, if the drug company or if the insurance company or the hospital has the power, guess who gets served? Yeah, yeah. Well, it all, it all ought to be my choice, my way. At affordable price, and you got to have a lot of insurance companies competing. I know in Louisiana, we're basically down to about one company writing health care insurance, and that's not competition. And if Obama said there'd be competition, I wish he'd show it to me. Well, Obama said a lot of things, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, whatever he said, I can promise you, bet against him. Hey, uh, talk a little bit about things that are happening right now. Government shutdown. I know people are affected. I know it's, it's already passed the House and Senate. They're going to get all their money back, but I'm sure it's still tough on a lot of people. President Trump is offering and offering and offering, and the Democrats, when he goes to talk on TV or make an offer, they're saying no, and they don't even know what's coming out of their mouth. Oh, believe me, totally with you. When I go through an airport, there's a TSA agent who hasn't been paid for a month, still working. Uh, I'm just like, thank you, God bless you. And the the, the flight controllers, the people kind of guiding the plane, uh, again, God bless them. They haven't been paid, and they're still working. Uh, and these folks aren't making arms and legs. Uh, these folks are middle income folks and they're without the cash flow. So we got complete sympathy for them. Trump has made an offer and frankly, it was an opening gambit. You could imagine that if Pelosi had been serious and come back and said, okay, but I want this and not that, as opposed to immediately condemning it, coming up with something that she knows Trump won't accept because it has zero money for the wall, which Democrats have previously agreed to, by the way. Uh, right now, she's not being serious at all. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, Donald Trump and his people did a good job of going back and looking at everything Democrats said they always wanted. So, so he puts together a plan on something he wants and some of the Republicans want, which is to protect our borders, and then mix it in with everything they wanted, yet it's still not good enough. And that that's what I find so hypocritical about Pelosi and the left. They are... Uh, <laughs> they they got everything they wanted, everything they talked about for all these years, and yet that wasn't good enough. But that told you they're never gonna they're never gonna deal with Donald Trump, and that's fine. If the people are crazy enough in this country to put a Democrat president with the type of uh, socialist Marxist people that are running in their party, and give the House and Senate to them, we're just gonna be in big trouble, and it's gonna be it's nothing we can do about it at that point. Now, on the other hand, we've got to have a positive alternative. A woman got to criticize going back to health care, Medicare for all. Medicare for all means Medicare for none. Yeah. Medicare is going bankrupt in eight years, going bankrupt in eight years, and they want to put 150 million people into a program going bankrupt. By the way, if you like your employer sponsored insurance, you just lost it under their plan. And did I tell you that your taxes double and it's still not enough to pay for everything? So, so their plan is awful. On the other hand, we do have to have a positive alternative. I think Trump is trying to advance that on immigration. He's, he's meeting folks, you know, halfway. You give me a little bit of wall funding, I'll help you on DACA. Mm -hmm. Because it's supposed to be a concern for Democrats. A couple other issues where he's trying to meet them, and despite his rhetoric, he's open to compromise, and they won't buy it, man. No, well, they're not going to buy anything that, that, uh, that he's selling, and it doesn't matter. Now, now the, the president decided not to do the State of the Union. I know... Uh, 
one talk show host went after him saying he should have never buckled on that. Should he have uh, given in on that? Should he good on, just done it somewhere else? I mean, Nancy Pelosi, if you had a media that really cared about calling balls and strikes the way it ought to be called, they would be ripping Pelosi's head off right now, but they're not going to do that. And when Donald Trump said you can't make a flight overseas with a, a military planes or whatever, uh, then she comes back and said, well, you're not going to be able to do the State of the Union. But it was petty for him, but not petty for her. And my question is, should he have given in on that? Or should he? is it okay to give in and then up the road, he's still going to get to do the uh, State of the Union? I don't think he should have given in because constitutionally the president is supposed to give a State of the Union. And Thomas Jefferson uh, may have sent in a written letter, but presidents, I think, since Woodrow Wilson have come before Congress to present it, uh, and the American people come to expect that, number one. Number two, think about it, Moon. You just described socialists as being part of the Democratic Party. You're no. not exaggerating. I think it is the Democratic Party. You're pegging it. Yeah. Now, Trump in that atmosphere would have done a fantastic job. They could not have been able to contain themselves. And I think the American people should actually see the the hatred that people on the left have. It's not partisanship. It has transcended that. It's, oh, it's hate. Hatred. It's, ha- it's, hate. No, it's hate. I say it again. If you live in a party that believes in killing babies is normal, uh, that, that party has got a, they got a moral and a mental problem. If you think killing a baby is normal and they do that and it's called abortion. That's another question. Uh, this may be a little sensitive to you, but I'm going to ask it to you. You know, Republicans had the House and the Senate. Why didn't we move on the border wall then? I mean, I, I'm just asking because I don't think McConnell jumped up and down to move it either. And he could have done something to change the rules to get this passed. So my question is, and I know that's in the past. I understand that, Senator Cassidy. But why do you think we didn't move move this thing forward when we could have? Well, a couple of things did move forward. So there's been about a hundred and something miles of border wall either built or upgraded under President Trump. I'm not talking about uh, in so, Jordan. I'm talking about in the United States. I'm talking about the United <laughs> States. Go to, El, go to El Paso. In the middle of El Paso, there's a wall that was upgraded and are built and expanded. And similarly, other places along the border. For example, under the um, uh, Obama administration, they would put out these cylinders that, you know, the kind where a car can't drive through. Uh-huh. Well, it turns out car couldn't drive through, but people could walk through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, that, that's that been replaced with a modern uh, a barrier, which penetrates beneath the ground, has sensors. It actually can stop pedestrians as well as a vehicle carrying folks. So it has been expanded. But the total bill is going to be $25 billion. And uh, we've not been able to get the $25 billion. Uh, Democrats actually, there was once a pathway to get there, the president didn't care for it, and the president withdrew a support for it. And if the president doesn't support it, then it's just not going to happen when it comes to immigration. Mm -hmm. So there's some attempts at it, but partly the president didn't like the conditions that went with it, um, et cetera. All right. Let me take a break. Senator Bill Cassidy, my special guest. Senator, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We have about 10, 11 minutes left. Senator Bill Cassidy, the great state of Louisiana, 844-766-6607. Hicks and at the hotline. We'll take a break on show. Senator Bill Cassidy, my special guest. We're visiting about some of the hot issues of the day. Hey, Bill, uh, and I want to get your take. It, it is political. It's nothing to do with you, but uh, the deal with the, the kids at Covington, uh, 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 Catholic school and, and, and what the media try to do to these young kids. I know you had to follow that. It had to break your heart that the media and the fake news just will not stop pounding. And they don't care if you're a kid or whatever. You better not have a mega hat and don't be associated with Christianity or we're going to get you. And they particularly don't like Catholics. Uh, they really don't. And they think, you know, Brett Kavanaugh going to a Catholic school was elitist. And this kid going to a Catholic school is elitist. Um, uh, uh, Kamala Harris um, calls the Knights of Columbus a terrorist organization sort of thing. I mean, it is just yeah. incredible the animosity they have, and they will leap at any opportunity to express it. Moon, um, I'm, I'm thinking of your lead-in song, man, Mother Mary saying, let it be. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking, that ain't Moon Graffon. No, 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 not, that, not on that one, my friend. It just, I just, uh, very frustrating to watch stuff like that and to watch them try to get away with it, and a lot of times they do. Some of the stuff backfires on them. I'm watching, let me take you into the next one. I'm watching all the stuff they're doing with Mueller and Trump and all that, and it looks like a lot of that is as fake news as anything else. 
Hey, the BuzzFeed, I mean, the media has been stepping all over itself. It just so wants to hate Trump and so wants to make anything associated with him bad that they will go after a BuzzFeed guy who's been previously discredited, but they just love it. They just love it, and they're going to go after it, man. It's just uh, they make fools of themselves, and then they say, okay, are bad. Then they make a fool of themselves once more. It's an incredible situation right now. Yeah. What do you think with a split uh, with the House being Democrat, of course, President Trump and the Republicans taking over the Senate, which has a few more? Or will we get his judges through in flying colors? That's the first question. Yes, totally, because that's a total Senate play. Now, sometimes folks say, wait a second, the Senate's not doing anything. The Senate, we've been approving judges right and left including some great judges in Louisiana. Uh, Trump is remaking the federal court. And since it only takes 51 votes, and it only takes, uh, that's a favor Harry Reid did Donald Trump, and it only involves the Senate, we will get those through. Yeah, by the way, now, you 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 know, we don't hear about it and read about it all the day. You said there's record numbers going through. I mean, we get everybody through, he needs to get through. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I mean, I know there's always one or two that may not make it because of whatever, but for the most part... He's getting them through. Yeah, for the most part, it's going to get through. And it's going to be uh, trench warfare because Democrats are doing whatever they can to slow it down. But the reality is we're going to get it through. Okay. There was always talk that if Nancy Pelosi and them got the House, that President Trump wanted an infrastructure bill. He talked about this when he first came in. Trillion dollars. Do you think that is something that will pass eventually that Trump and Pelosi and Schumer and McConnell and everybody's going to agree upon uh, dealing with infrastructure. And here's the number two question. If they do agree to it, will it really get to the places it needs to get to? I know President Obama, one of his stimulus packages, says we're going to fix this and fix that. Nothing got fixed. The unions got taken care of. So Trump will make sure it gets to where it should go. I don't know if it will happen. It was... It was supposedly saved for the second term for a second two years because it was thought that would be a bipartisan program Democrats could agree with them on. It'll be a question how to pay for it. And there's maybe some fundamental disagreement. There also may be some fundamental disagreement as regards the unions. Remember last time, Nancy Pelosi on the stimulus package did not want it going all to construction. She said, I think she said something along the lines is, I don't want this just to benefit men with hairy, hairy forearms. Uh, you know, as in construction workers. That's how she depicted it. Um, so it ended up going for a lot of stuff that had no lasting impact and did not address infrastructure. Trump understands we got an infrastructure problem. Uh, and by the way, a lot of women now work in construction. So uh, I think it could happen. But let's see. Nancy hates him so much. She may not want to give him this victory either. Yeah. No, no. I know she does. It's, uh, she's not. Uh, she's not for real people. She's not for. She's just not. She's it's unbelievable what she's what she's done. But we knew that if if they won the house, what would happen? We knew this was coming. Uh, well, th- we knew it. But keep in mind, they spent their whole time saying uh, if they were in a if they're trying to take out a Democrat, a moderate so called moderate Democrat taking out a Republican, I should say taking a Republican. They would say, oh, we want to work with the president where we agree and not work with him where we disagree. I can promise you, every district like that has people in it that would like our southern border secure. Yeah, what so about when push comes to shove, yeah. they won't cross their speaker. But if but if but if but if you pass the bill dealing with this, do y'all have Democrats on the Senate that will help support something like that? Something to really protect the borders? We're, we're gonna vote today to find out. I do think that I don't know this for sure, but I suspect that Trump that, that Trump would take less than five point seven billion. I suspect that he just wants a significant amount of money. It doesn't have to be five point seven. I don't know that, but I'm guessing that. Uh, he's trying to negotiate a deal. The fact that they won't make a counteroffer with any dollars going towards securing the southern border without a barrier, even though people like Cindy Hoyer says barriers work. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. Man. They don't want to. By the way, Trump- by the way, U.S. Weekly job has claimed the lowest since 1969. People are getting back into the workforce. And the crazy thing is Democrats say that they're for the working person and Trump is the one who's creating the job opportunities for them. And it doesn't matter. They still hate Trump. <laughs> oh, they hate him. They hate him. But the problem is the collusion that I see is between uh, the Democrats and the media. I mean, whatever one of them says, the other one says they follow up. They always call about. I watched the advocate do that 
against Republicans like yourself in Baton Rouge and in uh, Louisiana every day. They get the person they oh, like. I, they they support the person they like, and uh, and uh, you know whatever happens happens. They don't care, but they got their side. Like in the governor's race, they got their sides. Boom, that's it. They they are Edwards person. It doesn't matter what he says, does, or what's being done. They run with it, much like Washington. Well, you know, it's interesting because I got criticized for going to the tarmac and welc- welcoming President Trump to uh, uh, to Louisiana. And I'm thinking, when President Obama came, I went to the tarmac to welcome. Mm-hmm. I am welcoming the position of the president. And the president, wherever he lands, deserves our respect, even if I disagree with the president. On the other hand, when I go to see Obama, there's nothing like, oh, he's just like sitting there, you know, da 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 da. When I go to meet Trump, I get criticized. Well, of course. Uh, it is a little they, bit of a it's, it's, standard it's, you're it, talking about. It is. They expect you to go see Obama. Okay? They expect yeah, you to go see Obama. They want you to shun Trump. I did notice in, in, in Louisiana uh, news media, they didn't pound on Trump when he came in. I, I mean, they may have. I may have missed it. But they didn't really pound on him when he came in uh, as much as you would think. Well, there was an editorial written in The Advocate kind of criticizing the Louisiana delegation to go meet with him. Um, but once I, again, that's a, John, that. that's, a, that's a John George newspaper. I expect ignorance to come out of that newspaper every time somebody writes something. I expect it. Well, <laughs> I, said, I, I like said me. I said me. I didn't say you. <laughs> I'm telling you, when it comes out of that newspaper, it's probably going to be half you know what, and that's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, Trump... You know, he made commitments to farmers that were good commitments to farmers. He got a standing O from the farmers. Uh, and even though many farmers have been hurt by this trade deal with China, every American almost recognizes that we have to do something with our trade relations. But, no, but don't with China. you think, don't you think, Senator Cassidy, we're, Trump's not going to win it. The American people is going to win it sooner or later. They need us. I don't care what anybody says because of the way we do things in economy and stuff. They need us, I think. I agree with that totally. They, uh, ship, they have a trade surplus with us of, you know, like $300 billion. Uh, so if all trade ends, we'd be hurt, but they still out $300 billion. And by the way, I want China to be prosperous. I just want it to be an equal playing field where sure. there's not tariffs against our goods yeah. and where they're not spying on us and, and stealing our intellectual property. But I think most farmers that are not political, they see just what you said. Okay, I know we're taking a little bit of beat now, but I think in the long run, it's really going to be good for us. And I think that's what they see. Uh, politicians and news people in the newspaper don't have to tell them how to think. They can think for themselves. They're watching what's going on. And I don't know if it's too much to hope, and it seems a little bit naive to think that China will reform its behavior. But ultimately, you cannot make the rest of the world an extension of China where they lend money uh, put their hooks into a country like they're doing all around the world. And once they have the hooks, they begin to take all the natural resources from that company as payment. Yeah. Um, making that country poor. Just doesn't work. Right. Senator Bill Cassidy, we'll do it again. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. All right.